Have you ever dreamed of being wealthy using real estate? If you answered yes, there's a podcast you will want to add to your playlist. Big Fat Real Estate Checks, hosted by Marco Kozlowski. Available on all podcast platforms. It's a podcast about investing in U.S.-based multifamily real estate. If you want to replace your J-O-B income with passive income for life, host Marco Kozlowski's proprietary systems and processes can help you get there. And you don't necessarily need money or credit to do it. Marco has been in real estate for over 20 years and has learned lessons, horror stories, and an entertaining and fun way of teaching you how to win the game of cash flowing real estate without breaking the bank, without risk, and without using any of your credit. He has hundreds of successful students who used his systems and processes to replace their income and retire. Check it out today and learn from Marco. His podcast is filled with valuable information that you can actually use. You will learn how to build real, generational wealth. No get rich schemes here at Big Fat Real Estate Checks with host Marco Kozlowski to your playlist right now. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. All right, so for some reason, Alec Baldwin killed a woman, shot another, And he's been walking around free, going to Starbucks, going to dinner, going, you know, to, I don't know, the Hamptons or wherever these people go. And we've got an update on Alec Baldwin. You got to ask yourself this, everyone listening to this program. If you shot a woman dead at work and then wounded another, do you think you'd be walking free? No. No, 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 not at there all. There are people that do that. It's called workplace it's, violence, it, and they it, go to jail. It was called Alec Baldwin. That people do this, <laughs> and they went. Um, Alec Baldwin, this is the headline, then I'll read the story. A- a- Alec Baldwin still has not handed over his cell phone to police despite a search warrant. So he is violating a search warrant. The quest for actor Alec Baldwin's cell phone has now gone beyond New Mexico. And it has New York authorities enlisted to try to track down what could be a crucial piece of evidence for the high-profile investigation into the shooting death of the cinematographer, um, Helena Hutchins. What do you mean track down? Why don't they just go to his house and tell him to hand it over? Well, now he's over state lines. They let him go to New York, so they they don't have jurisdiction. You know, I remember one of the (laughs) – this is so insane – one of the paparazzi that was following Alec Baldwin around wherever he was vacationing, he stopped and the and the and they were nervous. The paparazzi was shocked and he was talking to him and they were yeah. nervous because it was Alec Baldwin and he couldn't remember the name of the of the, uh, which I, I have to look. I want to make sure I get it right. Helena Hutchins. Mm-hmm. The uh, and Alec Baldwin's like you don't even know her name. Well, well, y- y- well, you shot her dead, and you, you know, I mean, and he's laughing at this guy over that. You know what? I this is going to sound crazy. I think the cops are afraid of him. Of Alec Baldwin, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. He's yeah. got quite a reputation, <laughs> Acor- uh, and I, I think they're afraid of getting yelled at. According to an affidavit obtained by Fox News, um, they are requesting that New Mexico is dealing with New York. They're requesting a warrant for the seizure and search of Alec Baldwin's cell phone Interesting. to search for any evidence relating to the death investigation of Helena Hutchins. Um, I don't know what they expect to find on his phone. They're, um, text messages. And, and maybe, maybe uh, you know, Alec Baldwin, she was the cinematographer, which is almost like a director, very important person doing all kinds of things. And the director got shot who was behind her. And John Schneider actually did a very good video a few weeks ago with the same type of weapon that Alec Baldwin mm-hmm. used. Bo and, Duke. And showed how, you know, how it happened. And he said to, the director stands behind the cinematographer a lot to see the shot, but not, not, not from the gun, but the, from the uh, camera. Right. And that's why he was behind her. The bullet went through her into him. But um, uh, maybe, you know, Alec Baldwin seems to me to be a guy – that argues with directors and cinematographers and cameramen all day long. Well, you know, so maybe there's text messages. I'm curious, maybe, and maybe there were text messages of him arguing with her. And maybe there were text messages of him talking to his wife and others after he killed her. her. 
Yeah. All well, right. I'm curious you know, to know what the director says about this, because he was there. He was standing right behind her. He got shot. And I haven't heard from him what his story is yeah. about what exactly went down. Yeah, they're they're saying this is this is from, you know, the. New Mexican uh, authorities. Is it New Mexican? I guess so. If you're New Mexico, if you're New Mexican authorities. I, I think, yeah. I guess that's how you'd say it. They they believe that the phone could have information during or after, mm. you know, this. So, and there might be other things on his phone that they don't, that he does not want them to see as well. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? A lot of people have a lot of private things on their phone. New, yeah. A lot of uh, websites they might go to or texts or conversations and yeah. maybe who knows there's other things on his there, phone that he's wants to keep there's private. something on the phone he's trying to keep private uh in new york they've received a request from the santa fe new mexico authorities requesting ob assistance in obtaining alec baldwin's phone um and it's gone it's going to the district attorney's office in new york and it's going on and on this happened uh before halloween and and here we are in January now, and it's just, yeah, celebrities, they get treated better than the rest of us. Well, one thing I've learned on crime shows is these things can take a long, long time, um, years, sometimes investigations. No, we know he shot her, though. Well, we know I he mean, shot her, but not, if, they yeah. are, if they are trying to build a case against him, and we don't know, maybe they are. Um, you know, they want to make sure they have a good case before they went, w went through with it. Um, and that they had evidence. Now they might be pursuing him, and uh, and then might find nothing and move on to something else. It seems to me th they haven't really. I don't think the police have declared it officially an accident and just moved on. It seems like they're still well, it's open investigation. Look right, they're still looking into matters. So I'm sure that makes him nervous. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't make him nervous. I don't. He's I a think, strange dude. I think Alec Baldwin's in trouble because the police in New Mexico have been very tight-lipped about this. You don't see them on TV all the time. You don't see them doing press conferences all the time. And that tells me that they're looking at this very seriously. Well, they have a lot of Spanish speakers in New Mexico, so he can send his wife down there to translate for him yeah. since she's from Spain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. You know, I, I think New Mexico Hilarious. has English and Spanish, both as their official languages in New Mexico. Maybe. I'm sure there's a lot of Spanish speakers, yeah. like Florida, in South Florida. Yeah, but we don't have it as an official Language. No, no, it's not. Well, maybe in Miami, it's official. When, when pretty much everybody down there. When I was Spanish. in middle school and high school here in in Florida, they used to tell us all the time: by the year two thousand, if you don't speak Spanish, you're not going to be able to function in Florida because so many Cubans were coming here. Teachers say all kinds of things to get kids to study. They say that all. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> they do. I you used know, to use those tactics too. I don't when speak I was teaching any Spanish. Yeah. Now you know this this story here. This is really upsetting to me. It involves National Geographic and. You know, I'm at the point now that I question all history because I see things that we experience being reported and in, manipulated and, and how things are changed. And, and, the, and when historians from any era, if you, know, if you have a, historians writing about American history, one mm -hmm. of the things they draw upon are newspaper accounts and books written at the time. True. And when you're, when you're, when you're uh, researching history, what you want – are primary sources. Primary mm -hmm. sources are sources of information that are from that point in the exact point right. in history that you're looking at. Like if you're if you're doing a research on um, the Second World War, uh, Stephen A. Ambrose's works are not primary sources; no. they're secondary. Primary source would be um, something that was written at the time or by someone who was there at the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, now, he might use primary sources Stephen to write Ambrose. his books, yeah, like but, photographs that were but taken, that, that's still not a primary interviews, but, but so, he's not a primary source. And the, and the reason that primary sources, sources that come from that period in time are important is because they're believed to be the most accurate because they're mm -hmm. there when it happened. Okay, a National Geographic writer is writing a book, has written a book actually about Kyle Rittenhouse, and it has the biggest falsehood in it that you could imagine. and. It is not even something that's up for debate, okay? Listen to this. Uh, National Geographic author, uh, in, in her book, claims that Kyle Rittenhouse killed two black men. Now, he shot three people, killing two of them. They were all white. Maybe Kyle they identified as black. I don't know. This is just insane. And, Nation is. and, and you know, National Geographic is considered very credible. Right. 
we watch them on television yeah. all the time. Great magazine. You know, they, you know, there's a lot of credibility that goes with that. Not anymore. I think she's the exception, not the rule. She with this, people this like is a this. book that's done. That's gone through the editing process. Yeah, but I, most books you read, I, historical books, you know, you I don't think know. This they, would, they pride themselves no. on accuracy. Kathy, I mean, she's clearly. No. If if this if we were 75 years in the future and looking at her book, we would not have experienced. Yeah, it. But there's video evidence. We wouldn't have necessarily have the video in 75 years. We would have this book. Uh, a National Geographic author falsely claimed in her new book that Kyle Rittenhouse killed mm-hmm. two black men. The book is titled The Good Kings. She's an Egyptologist. Her name's oh Kara Cooney. I don't know why an Egyptologist is writing about – did he shoot an Egyptian? Um, consider Kyle Rittenhouse, she writes in the book, who used his semi-automatic weapon to kill two black men – in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Maybe she just doesn't know. While waging a glorious war on behalf of his inherited white oh power. My God. She just doesn't know, Brian. Now, I think she just doesn't know. Kathy, this isn't some self-published author that wrote this and said, here, she's she's with National Geographic. She's got a book deal with a real publishing house that has an editorial process where people go through the book and fact yeah. check. Well, and, everybody knows and, it's not true. And they won't know it in 50 years, though. Um, you know, and that's that's the problem. And that's why I am questioning pretty much all history these days. But because look at Wyatt Earp. They're rewriting, they're rewriting the history that we're living through right now. Well, and you have like Wyatt Earp, right? Everybody knows who he is. And he wrote his own biography. And a lot of people say with those Western guys, you know, Billy the Kid and all that, some some of their stories are exaggerated or – um, you know, maybe not told completely truthfully because they want to make themselves look more colorful um, throughout history. I think there's a little bit of exaggeration. Autobiographies a lot of these are always, yeah. you know, to glorify the. the but the, see, a woman yeah. like this, see, this is this is not, this is a very dangerous Strange. thing with this lady. Okay, how the, does she the, ju- how does she rationalize this? Uh, even if she doesn't know that she's wrong, this is what's wrong with this. Okay, because again, this was a major publisher, editorial right. process, fact checkers. It goes through a process, a big New York publisher. Mm-hmm. Most things that are written about Kyle Rittenhouse today will not be around in 50 years or 100 years, okay? They're on yeah. websites and things like this. True. This is a National Geographic Egyptologist with a publishing deal with a major mm-hmm. publisher that's a New York publishing house and the credibility of National Geographic. In 50 or 100 years, when someone is researching mm-hmm. the Kyle Rittenhouse era. They'll you use know, this as a primary this, source. This is this will be around as opposed to Breitbart and all these other things that are reporting the truth will be gone. Yeah. So this this is how history gets to it's like that old game of telephone. Mm-hmm. Remember you used to play it around the circle and when it gets to the last person they don't mm-hmm. it's a whole another message. This is very dangerous stuff. And um for this this went through an editorial process. They allowed this to slip through on purpose. They know exactly what they're yeah. doing. No, they do. And they may say, well, you know what? Yeah, he he didn't kill any black people, but but he yeah. wanted to. Yeah, you know, exactly. so it's representative. Or he may as well have. Yeah, or- it's it's representative of his intent. Right. So it's okay. Now, um, yesterday, the all all three guys in the uh, Aubrey case mm. got life. Right, twenty five years, I think. One of them. So they all got life, but the one neighbor who was recording got the possibility of parole. But he's like sixty something years old. But the son and the father got life, which they should for sure. Yeah, and it's that modern day lynch mob. And notice how the sentencing is just like a blurb in the news. No big deal. And the reason the me- see this is this is how the left wing media bias works. Mm-hmm. Okay, the the them they're going to be in jail for the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah. the the father and, and the yeah. photographer. They're going to have old. a hard time there too. Yeah, the, yeah, it'll be very difficult. Yeah. And okay, and that's the, and that's a good thing, by the way. What they did was wrong. And I they, don't know they what they were thinking. That. I don't know what they were thinking. They're ju- those are just the, stupid crazy racist guys but here here's here's the thing the media don't make a big deal about the sentencing at all because it doesn't fit their narrative because what what those three guys did with Aubrey was wrong it was yeah. racist it, that's like a lynching party it was a lynching party they lynched him the scary thing and, is if their neighbor hadn't recorded mm-hmm. that event they would have gotten away with it because Absolutely. the DA in that county Mm-hmm. was friendly with the father, and she didn't even press charges right. until the video came That's out. That's right. Now, you know, this, this is why – now, this part is why the media isn't be, making a big deal about the sentencing. 
and how it doesn't fit their narrative. Justice was done. Okay, these guys, what they did was wrong. It was yeah. murder. It was a lynch mob, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the system worked. The system worked because they uh, were all found guilty, mm-hmm. even when the first prosecutor was going to cover up and let him go because she was friends with yeah. them. You know, it, that didn't happen. So it went away from her. She may go. She'll probably go yeah, to jail, I thought too. Yeah, they charged her, I think, and or something. The media, the media don't want a story that the justice system worked because they want to keep the racial injustice narrative going. Right, right. You know, if this were. 60 years ago, maybe they wouldn't have even been arrested. And if they were, they would have been acquitted if they went to trial, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. in Georgia 60 years ago, probably. But the, this idea, they, they talk about systemic racism. The era of systemic racism is over, and the system shows that in the Aubrey case, and the media don't want anyone knowing that. Right. Listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Hi, Brian Craig here. I'm in studio with my wife, Kathy, and she's here to tell you about her experience with the MyPillow mattress topper. Well, as you know, Brian, I was waking up in pain almost every morning for years and years, and we had bought a new mattress not that long ago, but it still was not doing the trick. So I said to you, let's get the MyPillow mattress topper and let's see if it helps or makes any kind of a difference. And I have to tell you, after sleeping on it just one night, I woke up, no pain. I felt incredible. It made a huge, huge Huge difference for me and the pain has not returned wow that's absolutely amazing now go to mypillow.com and order your my pillow mattress topper and do what kathy and i did use the promo code kane at checkout k-a-n-e and this is an incredible deal because with the promo code kane you will save 30 percent off the my pillow mattress topper and get two free my pillows but you've got to use the promo code Kane at checkout. K-A-N-E. It comes in every size, too, from twin all the way up to California King. That's promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. Many times we hear that crises are opportunities. But to understand this, it's necessary to change the focus of how we see the context. This way, we can notice the ways that allow us to undertake what we think of as the new and what we want to manifest in our universe. The book from author Christian Francini, Creativity in Times of Pandemic, available on Amazon, provides readers with 11 keys to develop your creative potential. Keys that you can implement in your daily life and discover a new universe of possibilities that will propel you towards the single Singularity of being. Since we can understand creativity as a key to a new state of consciousness that connects us with infinite alternatives, this requires reformulating the old patterns of information and beliefs to enhance the creative process in all its dimensions. This must-read book is a great gift for anyone who wants to manifest a new beginning in their life. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Creativity in Times of Pandemic from author Christian Francini. If you love unique silver jewelry, you need to check out Silver City 925 on Etsy. There you will find a collection of vintage sterling silver jewelry and Native American rings for men, women, and children of all ages that are a tribute to cultures from around the world. From traditional Navajo and Zuni rings to Art Deco rings, poison rings, and animal rings, Silver City 925 on Etsy brings to you a variety of styles. They're beautifully designed vintage settings with gorgeous gemstones, including turquoise and Amber, lapis moonstones, onyx, coral, tiger eye, and a lot more. Rings are like many sculptures that can be worn on your fingers to express who you are. Whether you are searching for yourself or a gift for a special friend or relative, you will always find something extra special at Silver City 925 on Etsy. Go to the shop right now and start shopping. Etsy.com slash shop slash Silver City 925. Share the link on all of your social media so your friends can shop at Silver City 925 too. Etsy.com slash shop slash Silver City 925. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at BrianCraigShow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in and make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. All right. Now, I want to talk um, about our um, annual cruise, our annual listener cruise, the Steve Kane MAGA cruise. We have had to reschedule our cruise because of what is going on with Omicron. 
or is it Omicron? Which is it? Omicron? Omicron? Whichever. Which one is it, Kathy? Omicron? Omicron? Do you know? I don't know. Tomato, it, tomato. I don't know. I, I hear different things all the time. You know, you know what I'm talking about. And we've had to reschedule it. And um, we, unfortunately, came to this decision a few days ago, but uh, I didn't make the announcement yet because our Ian, who's our travel agent that handles all of our cruises, I, you know, I wanted him to be able to reach out to our listeners that are booked on the cruise and let them know personally, as opposed to me making a big announcement on the show <laughs> and be like, what? I thought I was going in two weeks. And let me explain why we did this. It's, it was, it, it, it's an awful thing what, what the CDC has been doing. Okay. And the CDC, um, put in this level four warning telling people don't go on, they should not go on cruises. It wasn't a ban, but don't go on cruises. What was that, about two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. yeah, about two weeks ago. And since then, the CDC has been requiring cruise ships to do some things that make cruising not very much fun, okay? And this is true, Not this isn't just the cruise line we go on for our cruises, which is celebrity cruises. This is every cruise line there is out of the United States are dealing with what I'm about to tell you. And what they're doing is the CDC is making the cruise lines test the crew and the passengers constantly um, and randomly uh, on cruise ships. And because of that, they're getting positive tests after positive tests yeah. because they're testing everybody all the time. They have people in hazmat suits walking around the cruise ship, which yeah, is they do. sounds so they much do. fun. So what happens is now um, everyone who goes on a cruise ship out of the United States, I, I can't speak for other countries, but out of the United States, and there's 92 cruise ships sailing out of the United States right now. Um, everyone who is a member of a crew or a passenger on a cruise ship sailing out of the United States has to be fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And they have been testing people like crazy and and they've been getting positive test results and quite a few, most everybody, over 90%, maybe like 99% have no symptoms, but they're right. testing positive. Right. And those who do have symptoms, I don't know of a single case where it's been serious, have been mild symptoms. But what happens, and this is true with every cruise line, when you get a positive test, they isolate you in your cabin. You're not allowed to leave the cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, for the rest From of your party. Yeah, for the rest of the cruise, yep. you're not even allowed to go into the hallway in front of your cabin. They well, they, they it's not your cabin. They move you to a lower deck without a balcony to a cabin by yourself. That's while your right. family stays in your original cabin yeah. that you paid for. That's right. Without you. Now, this is true of all cruise lines, yeah. okay? And and it's going to be this way until we get out of this Omicron. The CDC is is in the middle of this month. They're going to stop having any regulation yeah. on cruise so we'll lines. See what happens with that. And cruise lines are going to be able to self-regulate. It's going to take a while after Omicron, probably in February or March, before yeah. they relax this. So what happens is like— I think so. By like, spring break, I think. Yeah, like our daughter goes with us and our, and our listener cruise, and she and, she and I share a cab. So if, I, if they're testing everybody, I get tested, right? Say on the second day. Yeah. You're I positive. Get, I get tested. I have, and I get a positive test and I'm no, no symptoms. I get isolated to the cabin. They move me to another cabin. That's like a, you know, down at the water, like crew cabins almost. My daughter is now contact. She's contact, contact with me. So they do a test on her and now I'm isolated for the rest of the cruise. Mm -hmm. She gets isolated in a cabin without me or anybody else until she gets her result back. And then when she gets her result back, if it's negative, then she gets to go about her business. For that day. But it's not just, yeah. <laughs> she could get tested the next test day and she could be positive. Or she gets contact tested again. So if you're sitting at a bar, for example. Crazy. I'm, and this is true for all cruise ships. And somebody next to me at the bar, they get tested and they're positive, And I'm, I'm nothing. I get contact traced and I'm isolated to my cabin. They have had, uh, and I know people think this is crazy. Well, this is, anytime you have the government involved mm -hmm. in anything, it's crazy. If you tested everybody that went into Walmart every day, you, you would have a problem like this too. Yeah, I'm sure. And, um, yeah, and. <laughs> um, they got to stop testing so, so much. So because of this, so many people are, are testing positive, even though they have no symptoms. Ships can't go into ports of call. Uh, many of the ships have had problems where the entertainers on board that are in the, you know, the musical shows and all these things, 
they'll have someone who tests positive that's in a dance troupe. Well, and they cancel the show. They cancel the show because everyone in the show has been in contact right. with that one positive person. So cruise ships have had no entertainment, um, being turned away from destinations, right. no shore excursions, being isolated in your cabins. It basically cabins. comes down to, because when you and Ian, you, you guys have been talking about this for a few weeks when all this started, and it basically, and Steve, and Steve said to you, it's really not fair to take people on a cruise when they're not getting their money's we worth. We could be locked in that you cabin. Know, they, and they might not get to see us. You know, what if you got locked in a cabin or, or yeah. me and, and, and they wouldn't even be able to hang out with us or yeah. spend time with us. And then we go to the port and they turned you away and, you, and you're paying money and that's no yeah. fun. So, yeah. You and, guys did the right and thing. And what they're doing is crazy. And the, we, Ian, our travel agent, and I found out about this because uh, being a travel agent, he has clients that are on cruise ships for many different cruise lines around the world. And he's hearing from people on cruise ships about what's going on. These things have not made it into the news. This is all no. insider You've been watching videos on YouTube, and there's also groups and message boards and things where people are in real time posting what's going on that's not yeah. in the news yeah. at all. Like there's, um, there's this one couple right now are on one of the Royal Caribbean cruises. And I watched a video of theirs this morning. Mm. And what, what happened to them was – this is, is insane – and they, this is crazy. So they're on a Royal Caribbean ship, and they go into St. Martin, which is in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. Two other Royal Caribbean ships come in the port at the same time. They've, these ships, the reason there's three from the same cruise line in the same port, which is an unusual thing, is because so many ports are denying people because the CDC requirement of right. testing people. So they're all conglomerating the, in one area. So they have three Royal Caribbean ships pull oh into port gosh. in, in uh, St. Martin. Those little islands must be packed. And, and then – no, nobody's leaving. So, oh, the, oh, they don't uh, let them off the boat. No, so listen to this. So three, so three Royal Caribbean mm -hmm. ships pull into port in the Virgin Islands. A fourth Royal Caribbean ship – this is what was amazing. This was shocking to them, and they talked about this. A fourth – Royal Caribbean ship pulls in after the first three, and this ship has been following, they found out, the other three Royal Caribbean ships through the Caribbean. And what this fourth ship is for is when crew members test positive on the other three ships, when they get the port, they take them off and put them on this ship that has it's like no— a, It's like a hospital ship. It, like they a, sent to New York. Or like a plague Trump, ship. Like it's Trump a plague ship. It's a plague <laughs> yeah, ship. Exactly. So they put the crew. How fun. This, other, this fourth Royal Caribbean ship does, has no pain passengers on it, only crew that have tested positive with COVID. And by the way, they're almost all no, no symptoms. So your ship is, loses crew. So there's less people to serve you drinks. And and bring you food or man the ship or, or be or have entertainment. They have to steer the ship and have engineering. Yeah. What happens and, if the captain gets and it? And that's why you've been hearing so many stories about ships returning back to Miami from different cruise lines because so many crew members are testing positive. They don't have enough people to man yeah. the ship. Now remember, these people Sounds are like almost all no symptoms. Uh, this same couple that that found out about the plague ship following them through the Caribbean. Isn't that wonderful? Um, they were up around, Crazy. they were up at midnight and, uh, they saw, they were up on deck at midnight while they were in port and there was something going on mm. that Royal Caribbean did in the middle of the night, thinking passengers would be asleep and mm. not see what was going on. Like when Obama transferred that money to, yeah, to the Iran, middle of the night kind of thing. They had buses pulling up, taking off. I don't know how many crew members that were testing positive. You mean at the port? At not the on, port. Not on the ocean. No, they had buses at the port. <laughs> yeah. And these guys are- Water taxis. So you have these crew members- That's crazy. That they're putting on buses. It's like after midnight. And these two passengers, I'm watching oh on YouTube, are secretly filming this. Oh my goodness. And they have people in hazmat suits uh, ha helping them get into the buses and handling their luggage off the ship and everything. It's so bizarre. Meanwhile, so, none of these people are actually sick. No, they're not. That's the thing. They're because not. They, you, because you have to be vaccinated. To be on board. To go on the boat. Well, that doesn't keep you from possibly getting COVID, but it keeps or you from getting- Or testing positive. Or testing positive, as we know. But it does keep you usually from getting yeah, really sick, and usually you're asymptomatic, yeah. and Omicron's mild. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think once those regulations end on the 15th, you're going to see them very- Slowly over well, a couple of weeks, relax. They're, they're those not. Things. They're not going to stop things on the 16th. It'll take a few weeks for it. That's so, what I'm saying. Over a few weeks, they'll relax those. Yeah. Rules. So we rescheduled our cruise. 
uh, for next January. This yeah. will all be over. The CDC will no longer be involved and things will be normal. But this just seemed like this. This seemed like to be a disaster, possibly, if we were to have done it. So that's why we rescheduled it. Right. And some people had already rescheduled already to next year earlier. Yeah, we so have we have, have a, a good crew. Anyway. We have about 120, 130 um, people already booked on our next cruise. And which will be um, your biggest group. Yet. I think so. Yeah, I yeah. think so. It'll be pretty big. And that and that's why we did. And believe me, I mean, I really wanted to do this because this is my vacation mm-hmm. and I haven't had a vacation in a long time. And I could have used a vacation. I was looking forward to it and made all kinds of plans and everything else. But uh, that's why we rescheduled it. I mean, it's it's you know, anything the government gets involved in is is going it's to be a messed up. F. That's exactly right. <laughs> For that's lack wh- of a better that, phrase, that's why the government should stay out of everything. Well, they pretty much are. I mean, Biden said he's pretty much washed his hands of the whole issue, and but now he's it given looks up. like this. Yeah. yeah, he's given up, and and it looks like the Supreme Court is uh, going to say that his mandates don't hold up. Which they don't, and, and they say, except for like in a healthcare situation, they might have something going on there. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, these things are going to fall apart this year because you you cannot control a virus. You have to. There's there's medications available, vaccines available, and it gets to a point where you just you know we can't turn into Australia where you lock everybody in their house to ride it out for four mm-hmm. or five years, the whole country will collapse. That's right. And Americans are just not built that way. They're just not no. going to have their freedom taken away from them. It's just not going to happen. Nope, 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 nope. So that's what happened. That's what happened. Now, well, I, I think you guys did the right thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it no wouldn't choice. have been fun if, if everybody went on the cruise. And then, you know, like you said, you, you, get that, you get tested two days prior, you're negative, and then they check you on the second or third day and – Somehow you got it because somebody else, you know, whatever breathed on you. And then next thing you know, you're locked on the, uh, on the second level of the week. entire cruise and no, where's Brian? Where yeah, Brian? For a week. I, I don't know where the hell he is. Or half our group. It could happen. Yeah, exactly. It could happen. So you so, did the right thing. So when we, when we go on this next year, it will, th- this will all be over. They won't oh, you have, you guys they, will be ready to party for they, sure. They won't be testing you every five minutes no. and all that stuff. And I think we'll be over this pandemic oh, yeah, by then for yeah. sure. Now I want to thank all of our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you so much, everyone. And and our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you on each and every episode. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Jacqueline, Rick, Rich, and Nick. These are our top Patreon supporters. And if you would like to support the program by becoming a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this and every episode. And also a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. And the direct website address is patreon.com slash real Brian Craig Show. When you go there, it'll walk you through. You'll see what to do. It's pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy to use. Patreon.com slash real Brian Craig Show. We'll be right back. From author Ozark Mark comes your next must-read book, Letters from St. Nicholas, available on Amazon. Letters from St. Nicholas is an inspiring tale which tells the story of Nicholas Gunderson, a pastor who loses his way and finds redemption through a spiritual awakening at a Salvation Army Center in Chicago, as well as purpose through participation in the St. Nicholas Society. Through the Society, Nicholas receives a placement as a pastor at a church in southwest Missouri, through which he writes Christmas letters from St. Nicholas to individuals he knows that are dealing with different struggles, making an impact on their lives. Letters from St. Nicholas is a story of hope and redemption with second chances for people who have fallen. Readers will enjoy this story of tragedy and triumph to be reminded of the true meaning of Christmas, the gift of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Letters from St. Nicholas from author Ozark Mark is available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback. Order your copy right now. If you've been thinking about starting an e-commerce business, there's a book you need to add to your must-read list. From author Peter Pru, E-Commerce Empire, available on Amazon. This best-selling book gives online entrepreneurs everything they need to know to start and grow a profitable e-commerce business. E-Commerce Empire is a valuable resource for anyone who is just starting out in the world of online selling, as well as veteran online business owners. Author Peter Pru offers valuable step-by-step advice for managing and growing an online business in the 
competitive e-commerce marketplace. This important book dives into the most important skills and strategies that online business owners need to understand to be successful, including developing sales funnels, creating monthly subscription services, mastering the art of drop shipping, conquering social media marketing, strategically using paid advertising, and much, much more. Order your copy today on Amazon, available in Kindle and paperback. E-commerce empire from author Peter Prue. There's a podcast that you will want to add to your playlist, Warriors for Christ. That's the number four. Warriors for Christ is a Christian podcast providing biblical teaching without the doctrines of man. In other words, they like to let the Bible explain itself. The format includes non-denominational readings and teachings from the Bible. They also have interviews and whatever the Lord puts on their hearts to present. Life in this world can be very stressful and filled with anxieties. Warriors for Christ will give you the biblical information you need to help deal with all life has to bring. Warriors for Christ confronts many false doctrines which are pervasive in this age and what some call the church in a box. And they also offer a full gospel ministry. Find Warriors for Christ on Podomatic, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Player FM, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Podcast, and Spotify. Warriors for Christ. Share the podcast on all of your social media so your friends can listen to Warriors for Christ. That's the number four. Add it to your playlist right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. You know, um, we took a couple days off. Um, from podcasting. And the reason we did that was very much by design. And we weren't, we weren't loafing. I was still on the radio. Um, all well, the news, I, I was loafing. Yeah, right. All the news was about this January 6th stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm sick of it. It's it's so blown out of proportion. Of course, what happened was wrong. Nobody should have gone in. You know, we've, we've talked about this endlessly. We know what the whole agenda is. You know, like there's a poll here on Mediaite. More Americans want Trump criminally prosecuted for January 6th than don't, you know? Um, you know, and I did – the news was just totally consumed with January 6th, and I really didn't want to talk about it anymore. I think that we have um, said everything that needs to be said about it, and, well, I, and I'm, I would like I'm really to say sick of it. one thing about it, about Ted Cruz, and, um, you know, he said this thing in the, in the House floor about using the word terrorists, and um, – when he said that, I remember I, I had the video clip and I retweeted it and I said, oh, you got to see what Ted Cruz just said. And you watched it. And I said, well, if he ever wanted to be president, that's never going to happen now. And then I was really surprised. He went on Tucker and actually groveled and like was yeah, trying to that. take it back, which yeah. I was really thought was crazy because yeah, that tells me that he did he not understand the gravity of what he said. And then the next, you know, he makes a lot of mistakes. He went off to Mexico when there was like a natural disaster in Texas. I mean, he he makes a lot of bad decisions. He's always apologizing, it seems. But, you know, when he said it and he got That's so true. much. That's true. I forgot. <clears throat> he went to Acapulco during the yeah, snowstorm last you know, year. Yeah, I forgot when about he, that. Um, so yeah. When he said that, didn't he realize the severity of what he had said? Because he actually went on Tucker and was like apologizing and. I'm so sorry. And I mean, did he genuinely not understand what he was saying was a bad, just a bad choice? No, of words. I, I think, you know, a bad, no. a bad uh, word to say. I there. think Ted Cruz knew exactly what not he very was saying. Savvy. But Ted Cruz, he went on Tucker groveling, begging for forgiveness and all of this. Mm-hmm. I think he wanted to be, I think he wanted to be in the official congressional record mm-hmm. calling MAGA terrorist. And I think he chose his words very carefully, knew yeah. what he was saying, and did it. So why do you apologize? Um, well, he got a lot of negative feedback. People were freaking out about it for very good reason. He didn't see that coming. I don't think he realized, no. I don't he, think he realized know, how big the blowback was going to be. He cannot play both sides and win. Well, he's trying. You cannot play both sides in today's political climate and come out ahead. You have to be con- have conviction. And, uh, you know, when you say things like that, um, you know, that's a strong word to try to backpedal on. And, and I think he did irreparable damage to himself by, by saying that, um, using that phrase. He could have used a different term um, to describe what happened, uh, and, and it would not have been as awful 
But uh, to say that there was like just absolute outrage um, through by by conservatives and MAGA, well, over his word you know, choice, this, and I don't think he'll ever recover, no, no matter what he says. He will never. Ted Cruz is not. It's a colossal mistake. Ted Cruz is not MAGA. He does not like Trump. He is with the Bushes. Okay. And so he's been, been pretending to like Trump all this time. Well, remember what Trump called him, lying Ted Cruz. I think he's been pretending to be MAGA ap- is ever since Trump won. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's been just playing that game. And I think that moment, you just saw a moment of honesty from him. I think yeah. it was one of the few times you saw him being mm-hmm. completely honest and showing his true feelings. Um, and then, uh, and now, you know, now he's start. he's back to the lying and the backpedaling mm-hmm. and, and the manipulation. It looks of that way. The messaging here. I just saw this story on the AP that the Navy, they're updating boot camp. Listen to this for new recruits. This is Associated Press. The Navy is adding two weeks to boot camp this year and a major overhaul aimed at improving recruits' war fighting and emergency skills while also focusing on suicide prevention and character issues such as sexual assault. Hazing. Mm -hmm. Now, so far, that's fine. That's That's good. They need to address those things. And, but the last one is the problem, and extremism in their ranks. Now, extremism means Trump supporters. That's right. That's right. So they're at, you know, the other, and and really what all this is about is about getting Trump supporters out of the military. These other things they threw in there was to kind of hide the extremism part of what they're really about. This is the new woke well, and that's mili- a huge, military. That's a huge voting block, mm-hmm. the military. You know, that's a huge voting block. So they definitely, um, you know, it's in their best interest to get them to vote li- Democrat. Yeah. You know, a lot of absentee ballots. Well, there's always been, you know, the suicide the prevention, all that. That's all good stuff. It because is. there's always they been do high, have a problem, yeah. high rates of sexual assault and uh, suicide and, and, suicide and, yeah. and you know, the reason there's an increase in, in, in sexual assaults is because it's a completely integrated military now. So and there's a new aircraft carrier with a lady captain. You know, they didn't have sexual assaults like this when the sexes were separated in the military. So you got – sometimes you got to – Well, that it, still doesn't make it okay. No, but – They need to learn to control it, themselves. It, it, they're teaching people to kill people, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know. A lot of guys that get out of the military – and, and I'm not knocking the military. I, I think the military is great, but we watch these true crime shows and I'd say half the guys are ex-military. They just seem to not do well in civilian life. A lot of times. Um, when they get out and, and I can understand because yeah. they're train killers. And I know somebody that was in desert storm that took his own life. And, mm-hmm. uh, the, and he was an, um, this kid I grew up with. He was an amazing, amazing person, Matt price and good looking, Six foot two, gorgeous guy, smart, you know, had everything. And he joined the Marines and he went to Desert Storm and it totally messed him up. He, he, I think he was exposed to that, some chemical stuff, but he ended up killing himself years later. It was awful. Yeah. The, yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, he joined the Marines because his dad was in, was in the Marines and, you know, it was a family thing, but they really need to, you know, these, they, they, they take these guys in and it's a great thing to serve your country. But a lot of them, um, look at all the guys that came out of uh, the, the, the war with uh, George Bush, that, that horrible thing with Dick Cheney. Look what they did to those kids. Yeah. Um, you know, they just have to treat them more carefully and I think get them prepared for civilian life better. And obviously something is going on in the military that when, they're, when they come out and they're having such a difficult time. Yeah. It really breaks my heart. You know, there's a couple small things I just wanted to touch on here at the end. Um, there's a new poll out that says 80% of Americans, and this is of both parties, mm. 80% of Americans believe that America is in a state of decline now. I saw that. And that's because of Biden. You know, when, when Trump was in well, office, he's in a state of decline. everything was going well. Even though we had the pandemic mm-hmm. hit, he kept the country together. We didn't have supply chain issues except the toilet paper thing for a few weeks in the beginning. Yeah, for and some reason. Every, the whole economy <laughs> of the world was shut down, yeah. and he kept it coming. You know, and not this guy. And it's because of Biden. You know, it's really amazing what impact, how much impact the president of the United States has on the country. We've got this Mm -hmm. senile old coot who doesn't know what year it is. He Mm -hmm. said it 2020, he said the other day. Yeah. He, um, he's corrupt. He's obviously checked out and he's getting worse cognitively all Mm -hmm. the time. And I think everybody and running, can agree and he, on that. And he, yeah, and, and the country really doesn't have a leader. I know a lot of people say, oh, Obama's running things. So what you have are a bunch of 
people that have control over a certain area factions. doing it. Like the military is being run by itself right now. Yeah. You know, for I example. I want to talk about this thing before we end the show about Joy Reid because I haven't What been happened able with her? To. Well, there's a rumor going around. This guy that follows you and you follow him, he's in the know on the inside. And he's been tweeting about this. Oh, I know you're talking about Since yeah. last year. A John something. Um, and he has been tweeting for a few months that she is on the, ch- her show's on the chopping block. And he tweeted it a few months ago that it was being talked about and that, you know, things were not good. Oh, I Maybe thought you meant, I, oh, you said Joy Reid. I thought, I thought I heard you say Joy Behar. But no, I think Joy you, Reed. you said Joy Reid. Oh, okay. And so maybe that's why she's been off, so off the rails because she knows she's she's done. She'll get a job on The View. But um, now this guy tweeted that that she is definitely, her show's going to be gone very soon. Definitely it's on the chopping block. And, you know, a lot of times they have to wait for their contract to end. You know, sometimes I think it's less messy that way. Well, her it, show it's is hu- absolutely, she. her it's show. Ugly. It's is, an ugly show. Well, so is she. It's just ugly. She's despicable. The thing she's, I don't, I don't watch her. Uh, she, I don't know if anybody really does. I think it's more about her low ratings than anything, but she's really a vile, bigoted person. She's an, a hateful person. Here's a woman who has been to Harvard. She's a millionaire. She's got more going on in her life than, than the, the average person, more money, powerful friends, but she's oppressed. She hates white people. She just hates everybody. She's a bitter, angry, resentful woman and um, good riddance. I can't wait for her to yeah. lose her damn job. Yeah. She's, a, she's a horrible human being as far as now, I'm concerned. Now, um, a listener left a comment um, about me on YouTube, so I thought I'd read okay. it. Okay. It's, it's a very long comment. I'm not going to read all of it. But um, Nobody it, leaves comments about me. Yeah, they do it. sometimes. But I, you know, this one here was left that's just okay. about an hour ago. I prefer it ago. that way, actually. Yeah. yeah you know, I, do, I, I read the comments. You know, if you guys out there want to leave me a comment on YouTube. Um, Mark Levin is my number one. Mm. You tie with Dan Bongino for number two. Okay. And Glenn Beck would be number three. That's pretty good. Okay, I'll take number two to Mark Levin. That's pretty good. Then he writes about a bunch of other stuff. Then he says, sorry, but Levin will always be my number one. I think it's a personality thing. Depends on who you identify with. Well, that's okay. (laughs) Because he doesn't like my personality. No, is he trying? No, I don't think that's the way he means it. That's right. I said it. That's That's a compliment. That's what Mark Levin says all the time. That's a compliment. That's kind of like a... What, that's, a left-handed compliment? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, you know, you're number two, honey. I was. I ran into a list. <laughs> that's what he's really I'm trying to two. tell you is you're number two. Hey, listen, I'm number two behind- In more ways than one. Uh, uh, Mark Levin, who's a yeah. nationally syndicated guy, and I, and he has me down as tied as in number two with Dan Bongino. That's pretty good. Who's, you're in you good know. company. So, you know, I'll take that, and Beck's behind me. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, so I'll, I'll take that. Uh, well, you're number one in my book. Yeah. I, would, I'm, I ran into a listener the other day, and they, and they said to me, I got off the air, and I went somewhere, and there was a listener there, and they said, oh, Brian, you had a great show today. And I said, just today? See, that's, <laughs> that's you. Not yesterday. That's, that's you being insecure. That's not what he meant at all. I would just say thank you and, and yeah. be happy. I said, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I said, I'm just kidding. Oh, my gosh. You have one of those <laughs> those fragile egos that no. celebrities have, no. I guess, that I've no, heard about. No, no. Like Alec Baldwin. No, no, no. I, I did. I did. A I, little. I'll tell you a funny thing. I, I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I'll tell it. This is a, I'll tell you a funny story that happened with me and with a listener um, a couple weeks ago. And um, this, is a, this is something that I saw Jeremy Irons do once, mm. and, I, and I thought it was pretty funny, and I did it. So I, I was out somewhere and there were some other people there and, and this, and, and, and there was a listener there and, and he said, and he, he was, he's a big fan and he said, Brian, I love you. You're the best. I love the show. And there was a lot of noise going on. And I said, what, what was that? I couldn't hear you. And then he said it again, like really loud. I love the show. You're the best. You're the greatest. And I said, oh, I, I heard you the first time. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and I funny. saw, I, I know everyone started laughing, but I saw Jeremy Irons do that once on TV. He was, uh, it was like on, he was on American Chopper or something. Remember that? Jeremy Irons? Jeremy Irons. He rides choppers. At least wow. he did then. It was, this was years ago. And one of the mechanics says, Jeremy Irons, I love you. You're, you're such a great actor. And he says, what'd you say? And he said it again. He's like, no. So I kind of stole yeah. that from Jeremy he Irons. He's a great actor. It was pretty funny. It yeah. was a pretty funny thing. Hey, guys, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time, all right? I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Talk to you next time. 
Many times we hear that crises are opportunities. But to understand this, it's necessary to change the focus of how we see the context. This way, we can notice the ways that allow us to undertake what we think of as the new and what we want to manifest in our universe. The book from author Christian Francini, Creativity in Times of Pandemic, available on Amazon, provides readers with 11 keys to develop your creative potential. Keys that you can implement in your daily life and discover a new universe of possibilities that will propel you towards the singularity of being. Since we can understand creativity as a key to a new state of consciousness that connects us with infinite alternatives, this requires reformulating the old patterns of information and beliefs to enhance the creative process in all its dimensions. This must-read book is a great gift for anyone who wants to manifest a new beginning in their life. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Creativity in Times of Pandemic from author Christian Francini. 